So the Golden State Warriors have the assets this offseason to make a major trade. They can accumulate their assets with 7, 14, Wiseman, and possibly Wiggins to make some trades. Money's work. So the Warriors are most likely in prime position to make a blockbuster trade. So what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? I'm giving you guys 10 realistic trades that the Warriors could pull off this offseason if they are looking for maybe a superstar that you'll see in some of these trades or just kind of a good solid player that can help round out their team in attempt to go all the way next year with clay thompson coming back so if you guys do enjoy these videos drop a thumbs up on it i would really appreciate it let's see if we can hit 1500 likes and let's get into these trades the first trade i'm going to show you guys is definitely one that i've shown you before and that is pascal siakam going to the golden state warriors in exchange for wiggins wiseman pick 7 and 14 so you're going to see a lot of that package throughout these trades so for the warriors i'll kind of re-explain myself how i did in the 10 trades that need to happen this offseason they get a shot creator and pascal siakam who could defend for them help them run small ball with him or draymond at the five that would be a great defensive front court with those two guys there and with their small ball lineup he could be a an exceptional mismatch guy because you could put him out at the wing you can put him out kind of at the corner and you're gonna have to draw those centers out there because if rudy gobert say the jazz are playing the warriors in the playoffs has to guard pascal siakam the warriors are just gonna be that every single day of the week so yeah the warriors would have the splash brothers they'd have draymond siakam then maybe jordan pool that is their uh, crunch time five i think that'd be a great mismatch for other teams and help the warriors try to win it all next year as for the raptors they get canadian man andrew wiggins he'd sell a lot of jerseys there they get the former second overall pick in the 2020 draft and james wiseman pick seven that they could possibly use on a jalen johnson or keon johnson or davian mitchell they get picks 14 as well they can use that on a shooter like Corey kisper james book knight or cam thomas and they're kind of taking a step back but still trying to make the playoffs next year maybe they don't want to pay pascal siakam all this money create some cap space down the line maybe a year early because that's what wiggins contract is compared to siakam and you'd have maybe a fred van vliet jalen suggs backcourt with also og and obi wiggins and chris boucher and then you can also put james wiseman in there as well as your two first round picks that you also get in this trade i mean there's gonna be a lot of blockbusters here so once again we're gonna have another blockbuster trade it is the golden state warriors trading a different package here it's wiggins pascal wiseman pick seven picks 14 and a 2023 and 2025 first so four first round picks going to the blazers in exchange for damian Lillard and robert covington yeah this is a big one that i don't know if the warriors really need to go out and get damian Lillard. they might benefit more from getting a wing or a big here with this blockbuster trade they might pull off they get robert covington as well who could be a nice small ball five for them and if he's kind of their least offensive threat or him and dream on there in the front court and then you'd have willard curry and clay through, with your one through three that is phenomenal and that is probably the best one through three we could see in the nba as well as what's going on in brooklyn as well the blazers this is your rebuild right here you're getting wiggins who's still fairly young only has two years left on his contract eric pascal who you can maybe look to flip or keep him around wiseman who's still under contract for three more years on his team deal and you're getting four first round picks including two lottery picks in this draft for lillard so this is a jump start on the rebuild you guys know i've expressed that i like the ben simmons offer they can get a little bit more but this is still an idea for the war to use when they're looking to explore the trade market this offseason and speaking of the 76ers we have one right here for ben simmons it is the warriors getting ben simmons in exchange for wiggins wiseman and picks number seven in this draft the warriors like pascal siakam can use simmons in their small ball fives and he can run at the five and you just have a great defensive front court with draymond green and ben simmons probably the best defensive front court in the league simmons can also be a roll and cut guy for steph curry running the point as for the 76ers they get wiggins a shot creator who's got two less years on his deal than ben simmons so you'd get off that contract a little bit earlier but he would still be a contributor for you and your offense trying to still win it all next year you get wiseman it's really not a need because wiseman really can't play with Embiid unless he develops his three-point shot to be able to play him at the four which could definitely happen there in philly but you could also look to flip wiseman as well like he would be a nice trade asset to maybe move for another three-point shooter or a guy that could stretch the four at the four position for them and they also get pick seven in this draft they could add a davian mitchell to help out on their defensive side of the ball after potentially losing ben simmons in this trade trade number four here we have a perfect one i think for the warriors it is them getting miles turner to stretch big from indiana in exchange for kavan looney james wiseman picks seven and 14 miles turner might be the perfect addition for this warriors team and you don't have to give up andrew wiggins 
Wiggins. You just replace James Wiseman. You throw in Turner. So you got Splash Bros. You got Wiggins. You got Draymond. And then Miles Turner at the five, who could be your rim protector, who could space the floor, who can guard kind of smaller bigs on the perimeter as well. He'd just be a perfect addition for this Warriors team trying to win it all next year. As for the Pacers, this is if you're going to trade Miles Turner, who's going to be a free agent very soon. You get Kevon Looney. You can either cut him, use him, or trade him. Wiseman, though, is the big addition you get back. You just replace Turner there in that starting five. You'd have a Sabonis and Wiseman front court. You'd also get two first round picks in this draft if you want to kind of go young guys that could develop over time. You can go like Moses Moody and you can go Jalen Johnson with these two picks. Or if you want to still make the playoffs next year, you can go for veterans like or just experienced college players like Chris Dorte, like Franz Wagner, like David Mitchell, Jared Butler. That could be a route they can go. Also, if they still want to explore that Malcolm Brogdon for Ben Simmons trade that came up, that idea that could possibly work. And you could maybe have, say, a Ben Simmons, Karis Silver, Warren Sabonis, Wiseman. It's it's weird. Definitely is weird. I don't know how that would really work out. But I, I do like this return for the Pacers if they were going to trade Miles Turner. You get two lottery picks. You get the second overall pick just from a year ago. I, I like this return a lot for Indiana. And I love the Warriors picking up Miles Turner. All right. Yep. We're continuing the blockbuster deals. We have the Warriors getting Bradley Beal from the Washington Wizards in exchange for Andrew Wiggins, Eric Pascal, James Wiseman, and four first round picks. It's basically the return that also the Blazers would get in the Damian Miller trade. So for the Wizards, it's really jump starting their rebuild, kind of going all in on the youth movement, which ha Hashimura of Deha, their first round pick in this draft, also getting Wiseman and two other first. So they would have three top 16 picks in this draft, which would be nice for them to jump start their rebuild, like I just mentioned. You get Pascal, who's young, and Wiseman, who was the second overall pick last year, so they can use that to fill their center role, which they need for the future. We don't really know what would happen with Russell Westbrook if they'd look to move him. I don't know what team would really want to go after us. Maybe it's a team like New York or Miami or Los Angeles could definitely happen. But for the Warriors, you're getting just one of the best scores in the NBA, one of the best shooters in the NBA. You can put him at the two with Clay at the three. And yeah, imagine having a Steph Beal Clay one through three. That would just be phenomenal. He really doesn't help out your defense at all. That's kind of the big thing hovering over this trade because yeah, you still have Dream on there, but you you gotta add another defender because who knows what Clay's gonna be after not playing for two years. Will he be the defender he was back in 2019? We really don't know yet. But for the Warriors here, you're going out, you're making another splash, you're creating that big four after KD left, and you're getting Beal a couple years later. That's not too bad. As for the Wizards, I do like this return a lot for them for Beal. Like I said, you're getting the second overall pick last year in Wiseman. Boom, he's your center. You still have Hashimura and Avdia, your two previous top 10 picks. You're also adding two lottery picks as well as your pick that's basically a lottery pick in this class. And then Andrew Wiggins as well. I am a fan of this trade a lot for the Wizards if they were going to look to move Bradley Beal. Next up, we have a simple one, and it's actually kind of funny. Uh, I'll be sending Andrew Wiggins back to Cleveland, the team that technically drafted him, but then was traded for Kevin Love that offseason, and the Warriors' 14th overall pick in this draft for a sign and trade of Jared Allen. So the Warriors are losing a wing here in Wiggins, which they can replace with his scoring output like Jordan Poole, and they could also look in free agency to get maybe a cheaper defender out there to help replace him in that starting five. Five, but you're going out, you're getting that rim protecting five in Jared Allen's. But there's a reason I like the Miles Turner edition a little bit more because he can obviously space the floor and is more versatile for that Warriors offense. But Jared Allen, one of the best shot blockers in the NBA, he'd be a great rim protector for them. You'd have a nice front court defensively of Draymond and Jared Allen, and he would definitely be a difference maker after what we saw James Wiseman helping that, or not really helping, but just kind of contributing to that defense last year. It wasn't great. You lose Wiggins here, so you could still keep Wiseman which would be nice. Maybe they try a Wiseman for Allen swap. That could possibly work out, but then they're going to have to pay Allen right away. You give a pick 14. It's not that bad. So I think it should be either Wiggins or Wiseman and pick 14 to get this trade done. Honestly, you might not even need to throw in pick 14. It really just depends what Cleveland wants to do. Since Allen is restricted, they can match any deal he gets there in free agency. But if they're like, yeah, we really don't want to pay him the 20 mil or so he's asking for, we could look to trade him and a team that could be interested is the Golden State Warriors. This one, all right, I I know it's probably not going to happen because I don't think this team would want to part ways with him, but it's the Warriors going after Jaron Jackson Jr. Yes, it's an exchange for Wiggins, Wiseman, and three first-round picks. Basically, the sim like the exact same package as the Bradley Beal and Damian Lillard ones. You're just taking out Eric Pascal in the 2025 first. So, this is if the Grizzlies don't think Jaron Jackson Jr. will always be able to stay healthy out of foul trouble and look to maybe get a great package in return for him. And I think this is a good package in return for him. It's just, are they willing to part ways with him? 
I don't think so. So this is really just a wild card trade that I'm throwing out here. For the Warriors, this is probably one of the best players they can possibly get. Him or Miles Turner, I would just be huge fans with. And then somebody else we'll get to in a second. But yeah, somebody that could play the five for you. He could space the floor. He'll rim protect for you. He'll be able to guard on the perimeter. He still has one more year under his rookie deal. And then you're going to have to pay him. But I think Jaron Jackson Jr. would just be an amazing pickup for them. You'd have the Splash Brothers. You'd have Draymond and Jaron Jackson Jr. on the front court. It would just be phenomenal. Just watching Jaron Jackson Jr. and Draymond Green play defensively would actually just be a sight to see. As for the Grizzlies, you're getting a good package in return. It's just, do you want the Andrew Wiggins contract? You could look to maybe expand this deal into a three-team trade to find another team that would want Wiggins. But you're getting Wiseman, who I think could still be a good player in the NBA. He's only been in the league for one year. Yeah, he wasn't great his rookie season, but I think he's good enough where I would still take a chance on him 100%. You're getting the pick seven in this class. You can add a wing there, maybe like Moses Moody there, maybe like Jalen Johnson. You get pick 14 as well. You can go for a more experienced player at that selection or maybe a raw prospect in like Isaiah Jackson or Alperin Sangin. And then you're also getting the Warriors pick in 2023. And I believe they also have their pick in 2024 as well. And the Grizzlies would just be adding to their depth right here and really adding to their young core because they made it to the playoffs really without Jared Jackson Jr. all year. They got into the playing tournament without him. Yeah, he became healthy closer to the end of the season, but you can kind of prove your, to yourselves that John Moran can lead this team with Jared Jackson Jr. or without Jared Jackson Jr. So I think this would be a great return for them for a team that could still make the playoffs next year without him. And then you're adding Wiggins, Wiseman, and three first. That's a good return if they wanted to move him and not pay him the max that he might be asking for this offseason. Our third to last trade here is for Brandon Ingram going to the Warriors. Yeah, maybe somebody you didn't expect to hear in today's video, but it's the Warriors getting Brandon Ingram in exchange for Wiggins, Wiseman, 7, and 14. Now, maybe this is a lot for Brandon Ingram, who definitely took a slight step back from his most improved season the year before in 2020, but I think this would be a phenomenal pickup for the Warriors, and it's definitely worth the package they'd be giving up. Now, you're losing kind of your spot at your five, but you're replacing Wiggins with Ingram, who's a more efficient scorer, who's probably a better defender in my opinion and I just think he would just be a great secondary ball handler for that team. He can help facilitate for Curry and Clay, and also take some of the load off them and maybe he can just stagger his minutes where he's mainly running that second unit and you're knowing you can get 20 plus per night out of Ingram any given night while Curry and Clay want to get some rest. As for the Pelicans, this is if you don't think that Ingram could be a good fit next to Zion Williamson. You'd be adding James Wiseman, who's a upgrade over Jackson Hayes as kind of your young blue chip center prospect that you want to eventually start over Steven Adams one day. Now, I've kind of been adamant in previous videos that I'd like to see the Pelicans go after Miles Turner, but if that is not the case, I would like James Wiseman for this team as well, because he could potentially develop in a three-point shot at a good level where it's great spacing next to Zion Williamson. You also get picks 7 and 14 in this class can only help to that Pelicans young core and if you don't think the gap is too big from Ingram and Wiggins, which I think it's still pretty big, and that's why I have the other assets in here, this would be a good trade for the Pelicans in return for Ingram if they feel like that he's not going to be the long-term answer next to Zion. Because obviously, you want to build this team around Zion, so if he's not a fit, you should look to move him sooner rather than later. So we've talked about Miles Turner. We've talked about Jaron Jackson Jr. Another big that could defend and also shoot for them is Kristaps Porzingis. So this would be Kristaps going to the Warriors in exchange for Wiggins, Wiseman, and pick 14 in in this class really the same thing i was talking about with triple j and miles turner somebody that can space the floor rim protect for you and be a good partnership with Draymond green in that front court and can also work the pick and roll with steph and possibly clay as for the mavericks this is if they don't think that Kristaps can be that number two next to luca they trade Kristaps for wiggins who has one less year on his contract they get wiseman who i've been guessing up a little bit in this video. He's the second overall pick last year. Could be a nice pick and roll player with Luka Doncic. Fits that timeline a little bit more. And then they also get pick 14 in this draft. They could definitely use that on some shooting after trading Seth Curry away in the 2020 offseason. They could look at Cam Thomas here at 14 or potentially Moses Moody if he falls, who would be a great addition to this team or Chris Dorte can help that shooting that you want to give the spacing around Luka Doncic because that's how he will ultimately succeed in this NBA. Give him shooters and defenders and he he will just do the rest so i like this trade for both teams actually so this is actually one of my favorite ones in this video and then the final trade is a chicago bulls one yes i wanted to include this it came down between either levine or vucevic and i was leaning towards levine because i thought all right maybe since the bulls just acquired vucevic at this year's trade deadline they wouldn't move him so soon but hear me out this trade isn't as crazy as it sounds so it's the warriors getting the core vucevic someone that could space the floor post up for them and kind of not, he's not the greatest defender in the world not as good as turner or chris stops or triple j but he's somebody that could provide 20 point per game offense that maybe some of the other guys can't 
and kind of just be that versatile post big that they could use to expand and diversify their offense. As for the Bulls, you might be like, Matt, they just gave up Wendell Carter and two firsts. So they would be getting Andrew Wiggins in this trade, who's got the same amount of years left as Vucevic, who's still a good player. They get Wiseman, who... I think that right now, what we know of Wendell Carter Jr., you might still take Wiseman because the potential and upside is still there to be a better player than Wendell Carter Jr. You're getting pick seven in this class, which is better than the pick you gave Orlando for Vucevic. You gave them eight. You're getting seven here, so you're upgrading with that. And then also, you're getting pick 14 in this draft. And if you think you are going to make the playoffs in 2023, hey, this pick's going to be better than that pick you gave Orlando for 2023. So I actually do like this return for Chicago if they are going to spend money on Levine, let him stay, maybe look at a free agent down the line, and I, I do like this package in return for them, because really, you're not losing out too much on the picks you gave Orlando, you're getting a young post scorer in Wiseman, you're getting a still fairly young shot creator in Andrew Wiggins, and you're kind of just retooling, not resetting, but just retooling for that Chicago future. So, if you guys enjoyed those 10 realistic Warriors trades that could happen in this offseason, let me know what your favorite one was down below. Did you like the Pascal Siakam idea? Did you like the Miles Turner? I don't know. Let me know down below what your favorite one, or was there a trade that I didn't mention that you thought of like okay this could definitely happen this offseason it makes sense for both teams please let me know down below so yeah thank you all for watching drop a like if you did enjoy i love you guys and i'll catch you on the next one peace